I'm Mary Beth Doheny, and I support Women in History Month for the City of Pittsburgh. I'm celebrating Women's History Month today with Mary Beth Doheny, City Clerk for the City of Pittsburgh. Welcome, Mary Beth. Thanks Thank for being you. here. Thank you so much. Could you tell us a little bit about what the city clerk does for the city of Pittsburgh? Certainly, the city clerk is the record keeper for all of the legislative documents and many other uh, business processes that take place in the city. And in that regard, we track legislation that the elected officials present and legislation that comes from the administration from the time it's introduced throughout very various processes, public hearings and uh, referrals to the planning commission. And so we use a very sophisticated database today. Uh, we are very blessed to have have new software um, and we also have video streaming so that uh, in addition to the cable bureau all of our meetings are available 24 7 so the city clerk is as I mentioned the record keeper and we have many different references that we need to incorporate in our day-to-day -day work for example the home rule charter is uh, what dictates how our government is structured um, how council is elected, what happens if there's a vacancy, the types of legislation that specifically require public hearings. In addition to the Home Rule Charter, uh, we have the Rules of Council, and the Rules of Council dictate the day-to-day -day operations here in council, how motions are made, how uh, committees are structured, and how the council itself is structured. And so we use these documents to assist the council in their day-to-day -day operations. It talks about the standing committee meetings, the regular meetings, and the voting. So, you know, we have many uh, roles. We're also the meeting schedulers for council, uh, for the body. Council members obviously have meetings in their districts throughout the, day, the days and the weeks, but we schedule the public hearings and the briefings, post agendas, that sort of thing. I know that there's a lot of history in this room that we're in right now, the council chamber, and in the entire city clerk's office and city council area, including the vault. Restoration, preservation is one of the things that's near and dear to your heart. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? I'd love to talk about the council chambers. It's a beautiful room that was built actually for the city's 100th anniversary. This building was built between 1915 and 1917. And if you look around the chambers, it's very indicative of the era. There are industrial tools uh, built throughout the walls and the doors, the city seal. All of the furniture and the woodwork in here is original to when the built room was built, and it is made of inlaid wood, which means that each piece is its own puzzle. It's a beautiful room. We have spent some time restoring it. In the last decade, we've undergone restoration of the historic benches and the chairs that are in here. And so uh, we're working to actually redo some of the walls and the painting of the inlaid gold on the ceilings. In this room, all of the mayors that have served the city are, uh, their terms of office are painted on the ceiling. All of the boroughs that were originally annexed into the city are also painted uh, in the circles on the room. So this room is very historical. Uh, and right outside of the chambers, we have the vault. It's a fireproof vault, which houses all of the original records that the city currently houses here. And it includes the resolutions and the ordinances dating back to the 1800s. And more importantly, it, it includes the handwritten minute books, the select and common council minute books that date back to 1816. And we're celebrating the city's bicentennial this year. And so what a great time to highlight the, the records that are available in this city. And in coordination with the city's bicentennial, the clerk's office is very privileged to chair the Commission on City Archives because we know that the city has records throughout every city department in many, many buildings on site and off site that have accumulated over hundreds of years. And the time has come to make sure that these records are protected and preserved and digitized so that the immediate world will have access to them. So we are at the very beginning phases 
of uh, writing an archive plan for the city and bringing on an archivist here in the clerk's office. And we will have an archivist and a preservationist on the Commission on City Archives. And we are going to be undergoing a major inventory of city records throughout, throughout Pittsburgh. So it's a huge undertaking. It's gonna involve city employees and, and experts. We're developing partnerships with the archive community. So that's kind of what the clerk's office does. We are record keepers and you know we're very privileged to be a part of all the exciting things that are going on in Pittsburgh today. So why did you choose a career in government? Well to be perfectly honest I didn't necessarily choose a career in government I stumbled on it. Uh, I went to Sacred Heart High School and I took a lot of business courses typing and shorthand that was a very common career path for a woman in my era. And the opportunity came up for uh, a need for a clerical specialist with shorthand. And back in the day, I did take a lot of shorthand for, you know, then President of Council Jeep De Pasquale, Michelle Madoff, and other figures. So that's how I came on board. But I developed a love for the position. It was very exciting. The media was here, the, the government was making laws. And my career path took off. I received an opportunity to become the administrative assistant. And so I did a lot more writing, proclamations. I attended the meetings. And it was a very exciting job. And at that point, I decided to take some courses at community college, which I did end up with an associate degree. But my career path was um, going even further. And when my predecessor, John Mascio, left to become the first ever uh, clerk for the county council, I received the opportunity to become the deputy clerk. I'd like to say, uh, being here for 36 years, I've had the great privilege of working for so many different elected officials. And even under six different mayors, I came in with Dick Caligiori, and he was followed by our first ever female mayor, Sophie Masloff. And Sophie was followed by Tom Murphy. He served for 12 years. Uh, he was then followed by Bob O'Connor, my beloved friend, God rest his soul, and um, followed uh, by Luke Ravenstahl, and then our current mayor, William Peduto. So I've worked under uh, six different mayors and at least 11 presidents of council dating back to Jeep T. Pasquale, and I could even name them all. Jeep and Sophie, Ben Woods, Jack Wagner, Jim Furlow, Bob O'Connor, Gene Riccardi, Luke Ravenstall, Doug Shields, Darlene Harris, and now Bruce Krauss. So it's been a ma an amazing experience. I call it the roller coaster ride. You know, the elected officials come and go, uh, but the work stays the same. And that's been one of my greatest thrills is that I've worked with so many different people and that we've dealt with so many different issues. Um, that's, that's the fun of it, but that's also the challenge. Okay, let's change gears a little bit here. Um, many women have faced obstacles and inequality in the workplace throughout history. What does it mean to you to be a leader in the city of Pittsburgh? Well, I believe that it's a great honor to be the city clerk of the city of Pittsburgh. And there are certain qualities that I think uh, a leader needs to present when they're working with people. And first and foremost, you need to lead by example. And I recently heard a director come to the council table and say that he would not ask employees to do anything he wouldn't do himself. And I feel very strongly about that. I believe that uh, you need to take risks and that you can't be afraid to put yourself out there. And of course, mistakes are made. And, and a person that's in a leadership role cannot be afraid to admit that they've made mistakes, which I'm sure I've made many in my life. Uh, I believe that you need to initiate and have vision. Uh, my career path has not been without uh, struggle and inequalities. And that's okay. Times have changed, and you know I, I accept my career path, and it, it's been a great privilege. I think as a female, um, female leaders tend to be a little more compassionate than maybe their male counterparts. But I believe you also need to be strong, and I think I bring both of those qualities to my position. I think I'm not afraid to accept constructive criticism and to listen to the employees that you work with. And in that regard, um, 
the city clerk's office has a very small staff and uh, we are a team and without qualified dedicated employees we couldn't get the work done the employees are the ones that are doing the day-to-day -day work you know generating the legislation and the minutes and the video streaming and greeting our guests and taking care of the day-to-day -day business so it's, it's very important that we cross train and, and a leader needs to be actively involved with the employees so you know that's what we do day to day I believe that we need to build partnerships with other organizations the nonprofits and you know all of the other city departments so do you have any female role models or look up to somebody specific who's mentored, mentored you through the years Yes, absolutely. I would be remiss if I didn't mention my predecessor, Linda Johnson Wassler. Linda and I worked together for 34 years. We started around the same time. Uh, she became the deputy clerk and then the city clerk. And I was privileged to become her deputy clerk about 12 years ago. Linda and I have very opposite personalities. Linda is very calm and she was a woman of tradition. I, on the other hand, tend to be very high energy. Uh, I look for change and I embrace change. Uh, so we're very different, but we, we just got along very well. And Linda is very calm and people really admire Linda. She's a woman of grace. And I say this, I am very different in that I'm high energy and I sometimes pe push people's buttons, but that's who I am. Uh, I wish I could be a little calmer, and I often rely on Linda for her advice even today. So that's been a great privilege. And, and now I have the opportunity to work with Deputy Clerk Kimberly Clark Baskin, and she also is uh, quiet and calm. And so I guess we'll bring balance to the position. Um, and I look forward to mentoring uh, Kim and other staff members because you need to share the knowledge with others so that they can t carry on the torch. Uh, the other mentor in my life, it should be so obvious, is my mother, Lorraine Dehaney. She was the hub of our entire family. My mother was always involved in activities. She was in the middle of everything. She organized graduation parties and weddings and funerals and she was never afraid to put herself out there. She was very good in the kitchen and I'm actually good in the kitchen too. And um, what we learn at home is who we become. And again, because my mother was so active and involved, I I'm that way, I'm always in the middle of activity. So my mother had seven children in nine years. She was very, very busy. So I have one brother and five sisters and you know, we're, we're very close and we're always together doing things and that's kind of how what I emulate in my job you know get involved um, be, be around people and it's been a it's been a great honor would you give to other women seeking careers in government or leadership positions I would suggest that people get involved um, that they find something they're passionate about and and go with it I know that um, I've been very active in my community um, and I think it's been invaluable in, in my life experience and here at work to get involved, to come to a council meeting or a school board meeting and to speak out if you feel strongly about something. Uh, gear your education or your personal life towards that passion. You spend a lot of time at work and so you might as well do something that you love. And so whether it's political science or liberal arts, you know, just get involved. Don't stand on the sidelines. Don't be afraid as a woman to speak up because women do make great leaders. That's great advice. Thank you so much for talking with us, Mary Beth.